Welcome to episode 98, Looking for Answers, which I'm saying are in several episodes, which is why I thought to myself, wouldn't it be so simple if looking for answers were before 101, because that rhymes with, I hope you have closed captioning on. Internal joke. What was that you just said? Already done. Done? What's done? No joke and everything. Oh, okay, thanks. One question I feel I should answer is whether I'd lied about what I just did. I didn't, but I'll leave the explanation for the next episode, hopefully. I do remember mentioning in past episodes how somebody told me that maybe there's no better way to know me than by following my blog. And that's what I myself have subsequently told others. Well, looking back at the rawness of some of my past episodes, I think some people probably now view me as a bitter, bitchy bigot who is be filled by polar being melted and begging for asylum confinement. Well, not to be conceited, but I know I have a certain cleverness with words. Internal joke. Don't you know using thinking that sentence would have been less conceited? <laughs> I observe that cleverness often in others too. It's part of the reason I sometimes like reading for the love of sentences in Frank Bruner's New York Times' column. That cleverness in the use of words can be funny or used to poke fun at or about something or someone. The cleverness can even be used to convey or be interpreted as conveying positive or negative connotations towards something or someone. I mean, it could be made in true jest true, or out of a misunderstanding perhaps, or out of senility or stupidity, or out of hubristic cleverness. I thought of taking down some of those old cringe-worthy episodes, but then thought not. After all, I had devoted more than two episodes to evolvement and change, and I'm an altered person now as far as a certain social media post. These days, for the most part, I try to keep my distance from people who I feel have hurt me in the past, but I try to remain cordial if I do come in contact with them. And when I feel I'm newly hurt or wronged, I try to let it roll off my shoulders so I cool down quickly. So, even if any of the adjectives I used earlier still apply, I try to remain committed to the mantra that the best reflection of character is how you treat people you don't necessarily like or are attracted to or you feel don't like you. You know, there is one thing I can think of, theoretically other than cheating, that defeats both randomness and coincidences. I'm not going to repeat myself on this, as I, seen as I already mentioned it, but the good thing is, the mere concept in and of itself is only plausibly possible because there's also just one thing in my philosophy of life that you can't get enough or too much of on an herb. And just bear in mind again, this is my philosophy of life and everybody is entitled to a philosophy of life. Anyhow, I try to avoid jumping to conclusions when I feel I've been wronged or hurt. If I start wondering about interpreting the intentions of what someone has said or did or text me, I move to apply the theory that repetition eliminates doubt and start counting the number of times it happens. Internal joke, you trying to say something? And yes, when I see unusual doubling up with respect to those intentions, I figure who or what should be avoided. Internal joke, yeah? You know that must have been a one or two episode thing only, right? So, wow, it's almost a year now since I was at this naming ceremony, which is a sort of christening, when the presiding minister asked audience members to raise the right hand or raise a hand towards a child to convey blessings of his religion. Since I, didn't be, since I don't believe in religion, I hesitated, but then I raised my right hand towards the baby to convey my own blessings and good wishes. Internal joke. 
while thinking, this looks so much like a Nazi salute. The thing is, internal jokes aside, even though I don't believe in religion, I don't automatically lack respect for those who do. There are many who don't or who just give lip service to their religion. They, they don't respect the tenets of their own religion. Unlike me, they, there are some that need religion to do good. In other words, I'm, I might not be religious, but I'm also not intolerant. So I do not disrespect a place of worship or necessarily the rituals of the worshippers. But while I respect their right to their rituals, I have to reserve the right to perhaps not participate or perhaps leave or perhaps just never return. So, not long after the naming ceremony, I attended a Sunday morning church service at the invitation of a friend. It was my first Sunday morning church service in many a year, but I was trying to get to know the person. Well, it so happened that during the service, the current pastor acknowledged a former pastor and asked the audience members to raise their hands in his direction in acknowledgement and honor. The same internal joke came to my mind as before about salute. But this time, the internal joke went further because I asked myself, that time I was raising my hand to my baby grandnephew. Who knows who or what I would be raising my hand to this time? Internal joke. Coincidences? Rituals of a place you don't know have to be fully explained to you before you can be expected to fully participate. Your hosts have to give you the choice of staying and participating or leaving and not participating. If you are not given that choice, then it cannot be considered disrespectful on your part if your host didn't probably fill you in and leave you sitting there trying to figure out what to do. And I dare anyone to name something that's and I dare anyone to name something with more religion. <laughs> and I dare anyone to name something with more ritual than religion. Internal joke. Don't go there. But my question on religiosity is, if you want to honor what your creator made in terms of another human or any other wonder of nature, why keep trying to destroy that creation? To me, freeing yourself from religiosity also frees you from its greatest pain, intolerance. You know, it's some months ago now, since I was in a hospital bed and I sat listening to a devout Christian young man telling me that the only way to God and to heaven is through Jesus. We didn't argue, but politely discussed the merits of religion and whether religion was needed to live a good life. I told him that perhaps 34% of the world's population are of the Christian faith. And he said he knew it to be even less. But he also said that those non-Christians were condemned to damnation. He said that although he slipped up sometimes, he was trying to live his life according to the principles of Jesus and of a particular commandment, which was, love thy neighbor as thyself. I commended him. I didn't try to argue to him that if he had been born to Muslim parents, he probably would have been here telling me that the only way to God and heaven was through Islam's prophet. I told him, I still don't believe in religion, but he's fine with his. He was a white man who had sought out a black man for a friendly conversation. He seemed committed, as he said, to truly practicing a key commandment of his religion. And commandments of a religion are requirements to be adherents of the religion. So I could wish him well because I know I'd like the world that would exist if he practiced just that one commandment of his religion. And if he 
truly, truly believed in and practiced the teachings of his Jesus, a person to whom good wasn't relative.